Hey guys, welcome back. I am uh, going to do a little more drawing today on that gorilla we were working on last time and hoping to kind of get that finished up here uh, as far as the actual drawing goes. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of work to do in Illustrator to vectorize it and make sure it's all cleaned up and uh, smooth and looking good uh, there. And I don't know if I'm going to stream that process or not yet. Um, I don't really know a lot about the uh, streaming software that I'm using. Somehow I managed to get it set up on my right screen where I do my drawing, but I don't know what's going to happen if I transition over um, to the left screen. So um, Also, that can be kind of boring. I don't know. It could be really insightful, I guess, for folks who are kind of new to Illustrator. Um, I don't know. We'll think about it. Anyway, we're going to get going on the gorilla again, uh, continuing filling in the line work, um, some of those shadows, and uh, cleaning up the face, getting that all detailed out uh, properly. And um, again, we're going to focus uh, really hard on just keeping things very simple, very cartoony, um, just really, really clean, simple artwork that'll transition very well into vector and into a uh, print logo or a morale patch or uh, whatever uh, Silverback decides he wants to do with it. So uh, we'll keep that focus. I'm going to be playing some music again today. Uh, again, hopefully uh, nobody gets too upset with me for that. Um, I've been trying to kind of choose some more uh, sort of obscure artists in kind of the hopes that they're less likely to notice um, or care or maybe they'd appreciate the plug so uh, this one is a very obscure artist I think um, I don't know of anyone that I've ever met who's heard of him before um, but his name is Martin Bennett and he's a um, Scottish American artist um, from what I know about him, he was uh, quite the prodigy uh, musically, and uh, for a while he was doing some music that kind of uh, made a mix of sort of techno dance music and traditional um, Scottish music, uh, bagpipes and um, storytelling and a lot of uh, really cool, uh, cool stuff. So. Um, I really, really enjoyed uh, his first album, at least the first that I found, Bothy Culture, and then the uh, second album, Grit. Uh, just really, really loved those albums. I've been listening to them for a very long time. Uh, they're not new albums. They've been out for a very long time. Um, probably, uh, I don't know what the actual publication dates are on these, but I feel like I've been probably listening to this music for like 15 years. So um, nothing new. Uh, really, really looking forward to his next album and was very sad to discover that I had found him late. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Martin, it sounds like he passed away from uh, cancer uh, fairly young. So um, really, uh, really sad about that and would have loved to experience more of, of what he had uh, in store for the future there. Um, but I guess, you know, sometimes God calls you home early, and I guess his work here was done. So um, my condolences uh, late uh, to his estate or his family, um, whoever uh, lives on, I would like to kind of help with that by keeping his music alive. Um, and so I thought I would share it with you all uh, today. So. We're going to be listening through his album, uh, Bothy Culture and Grit. Um, we're just going to kind of be playing straight through them. We'll see how far we get. I don't know if this is going to be a very long stream today or not. We'll kind of see how things do. I had a little bit of a fall the other day, and um, my back and uh, joints have been kind of uh, iffy lately. So um, we'll see what we can do. But hopefully we'll, we'll be able to finish out the artwork here on the Gorilla. Uh, at least the line work, I want to get that done, and then uh, maybe some basic color work uh, as well. So uh, that would really be fun to get into. I really would like to do some of that today. So uh, 
we'll get going. Again, music today is Martin Bennett. Martin spelled with a Y, M-A-R-T-Y-N. Bennett with two N's, two T's. And I'm sure you can find him on Google Play Music. Uh, that's generally where I get most of my music. Um, I think, though, actually these I'm pretty sure I purchased off of Amazon and uh, was able to take advantage of their um, download, I think, uh, instant access download. So I got it downloaded uh, right away, and then the CD arrived uh, later, and um, that was awesome at the time. I didn't have a way to play anything but CDs in my car. Uh, currently, I don't really have a play, way to play anything but CDs in my car because uh, my auxiliary jack on my phone is blocked by my phone case. So um, I enjoy it. Uh, anyway, okay, let's actually get going. I'm babbling on too long. Oh, one other announcement today. I discovered that Sketchbook uh, is no longer Sketchbook Pro, I guess. Uh, it's free. So they've always had a free version that you can play with. You're limited to like three layers and um, basic tool set and all that. Uh, really great starter set, but you just you, it's not enough. You gotta throw down that thirty dollars each year and get the upgrade and um, keep using it, get more layers, more features. Um, so a little bit. Uh, I guess bummed. I think I just paid that $30 not that long ago, but uh, it's free now. So if you were thinking about getting into drawing on your computer, uh, definitely no better time. Sketchbook, I think, is the most uh, fluid and natural drawing program for your computer. Uh, there's a lot you can do in Photoshop. If you've got Adobe Photoshop, I know there's people that paint exclusively in that and they do amazing work and you know sketchbook definitely has its limitations and sometimes I go back and forth between them um, but Photoshop has a lot of setup I mean I don't even know how um, how to get a workspace set up that's n anywhere near as intuitive and fluid as sketchbook so uh, Autodesk sketchbook is free sketchbook.com is the website download it there uh, you can also get it on your mobile device, so if you've got a pen or a stylus uh, for your tablet or your phone, uh, you can draw there as well. Um, I actually do that sometimes uh, on my uh, Samsung Note, so um, really great. I'm assuming that the full tools are unlocked there as well, um, but I just noticed it when I opened up the program uh, this afternoon that it was uh, telling me it was free. Um, also, there were a bunch of driver updates, so I announced this video was going live a little while ago. I had to do a bunch of driver updates to get everything working. I needed that rotation working because we're going to be using that today. So, um, Okay, without further ado, I've talked way too long. Let's get some music going. Let's get some artwork going and have some fun. So we'll go ahead and, and get right into it here. Go. There's our gorilla. Move my water real quick here where I can get to it. It's really dry today, so I'm feeling a little dehydrated. Okay. Let's get back to work here. So, uh, let's just finish out kind of where we were. So, Start drawing in these uh, feet here. And let's actually make use of that rotate. Get that angle pulled up. Get some kind of nasty toenails going on here, but he's a gorilla. 
Silverback, no reflection on you. I have no idea what your toenails look like. And I don't want to know. Don't send me a picture. So, I feel like his uh, third toe, fourth toe probably aren't going to show past those at this angle, so I'm going to leave them as such. I'm drawing in here. Toenails drawn in. Yeah, I thought I would try drawing that toenail first. And then the toe. That's a little weird. When I sketched this all in, I was being quick. I didn't really think too much about placement of these toes. That line's super thick, but I'm going to clean it up. I actually want to keep those bottom lines a little bit thicker as we continue sort of shading things out, but it doesn't need to be thicker right now. Now, normally drawing feet, you wouldn't really have a uh, a big difference in the angle of the toes. This one's definitely angled out a lot further. Um, but since we're dealing with an ape, he's going to have a lot more dexterity in those toes. and probably spread them out a little bit, especially an ape this size. He's kind of hulkish, and he's going to need to balance. So, Okay, and then let's see where we at here. Um, let's zoom this out. Angle my laptop real quick here. Okay. So to move the, the drawing around, um, for zoom and, and for rotation, I'm using my Wacom uh, Cintiq tablet. But for panning, 
Um, I probably have a pan button. I've got a bunch of extra buttons here that I may have programmed at some point. I don't know which one's which. Again, I need to label these buttons now that I've got them configured uh, for each application so that I can, excuse me, so I can remember which does what. But um, to pan is really simple. You just hold your space bar in Sketchbook and then grab the blue outer ring to move it around. You can also zoom it with the inner ring, and I believe that's to rotate it. And I think they, they kind of changed that. It's actually a lot easier to use lately, and I didn't notice before. Um, okay, so we've got the character pretty much drawn in. Uh, one thing I did remember as I was uh, showing my wife my work the other day was we needed some cargo pants going on with this guy. That was a request Silverback made. So let's get that going on here real quick before we forget. stitches on there. Let's fill in the inside of it there. And actually, since I've already erased that, it would be kind of fun to set this like a little tab on it. Okay, got that going. Just bring that seam down. Okay. Pretty happy there. Let's pull this in. Let's start thickening up this outer line. So one thing I really like to do with line work, comic book type line work or uh, more cartoony stuff, is use outlines to create depth. So even with just lines and no shadows, we can create a lot of depth by putting a thicker outline around the edge of an object or a character, that makes it pop out. People notice that. Your, your eye notices that it pops out. And then what's interesting is if you continue those lines in towards your artwork, like this one, and it gets thinner as it goes in, um, it actually starts to create some depth uh, beyond just the... Uh, character itself popping out, but you can actually create some additional depth with parts of the character. So you can make his uh, overlapping features seem, uh, actually feel like they overlap. So that's what 
we're going to be working on here. And then the thicker that your line is, the more uh, the more depth it kind of conveys. So. Um, Playing around with burying the thickness of the line can be really fun and give you some cool effects. And in line works specifically, it's really going to help here. So here's a case where that banana is behind his leg and just flat artwork, just line work, that's not going to be super apparent. But by continuing this thick line through the artwork, not just outlining the artwork, coming through here, we're going to help separate that arm. And then the banana itself is going to have a thick outline on it as well. Although I'm not going to get quite as extreme. Oh, jeez. That's not good. I'm getting lazy and I'm not rotating the canvas. And and I end up with some really scribbly lines. Don't do that. Okay. Didn't know we get our. Shadows filled in real well here. Part of that cleanup process in Illustrator is going to be going into these pools and eliminating those white areas. So the more of that we can do now, the uh, more work we'll save later. his feet here.
Okay, and then here's a spot where I want to use that thick line to add some depth. A little bit of shadow there. A little bit of depth to that pocket. Same there. Just kind of fade that one in, sort of get slimmer there. Kind of ended up with an extra line there, but I'm going to use that to add some depth and thickness to this belt, a little bit of a shadow. Okay, it's probably pretty quiet, but um, in the background there in the music, you can hear a story, an old man telling a story here. I think it said on the album cover that he actually, um, Martin went to some Scottish communities and here in the U.S., but um, over on the East Coast. And I don't remember where it was, but uh, actually sort of interviewed some old-timers and uh, first-generation folks to get some of these stories that he did uh, pieces on, so kind of cool, old, old stories. Okay, let's back out here. And there we go. Okay, so now the um, the pants area um, that we've been working on, the feet, um, you can probably kind of really see a difference. I feel like I can see a difference uh, just looking at it. Now it, it has more of a separation of the lines, the internal detail lines, and the external shape and forms. Um, that's what we're really going for there. So let's continue. That's kind of a difficult one, the little curve changes. I actually never really thought much about this line work theory of using the thicker lines. It was more of just something that I did out of necessity. Just to clean up the artwork. and I hadn't really thought about it much, but I actually uh, worked with an artist for a while. Uh, not doing art, but uh, he was uh, teaching his daughters uh, a little bit about artwork and different styles and 
Um, and he had seen some of mine and he was asking me if I had a, uh, a website or somewhere where he could show them my uh, line work because he felt like uh, I really did a good job uh, in his mind of using those line weights to make uh, make depth and uh, really kind of elevate the the artwork. So uh, that was interesting, and and uh, I felt really silly about it at the time because I'm not really um, I don't know. I guess I just don't really think of myself so much as being some sort of great artist or anything uh, and that he would want to use my artwork and um, and even this sort of assumption that that I knew what I was doing and and was uh, paying attention or intentionally um, making those choices uh, I mean I I wasn't even really sure what he was talking about at first so uh, that was interesting. But once I got to thinking about it, really, uh, really thinking it through, then uh, it actually really helped me quite a bit because I could be more intentional about it and use it better. So sometimes there are things that you do naturally um, that you don't really pay attention to, but uh, having having a community, having someone else to look at your work and uh, talk about process and all that uh, really is uh, incredible, the difference that it makes in your artwork. Okay. So we're pretty much done. With his body here. Now we just need to get some depth here in his face, his beard. Kind of strengthen up those lines. And then I feel like this shadow, there should be some shadow from his beard, right? Let's actually really exaggerate the thickness there. And then slowly, carefully try to taper it down.
Okay, then here we're using that variable line thickness to try to kind of get some emphasis on the wispiness of these little hairs that are kind of sticking out. So we don't want those to be too exaggerated. Exaggerate his big brows there. Actually, this one could probably. Thing. within his mouth here. Okay. I'm feeling pretty happy with this guy. Pretty excited about this. Um, 
Yeah, I think at this point all that's left to do is just to detail out that gun. Get that looking proper. Yeah, and then we can maybe get into some coloring. So let's pull that here. some guides here to help gun this long, but just give myself a little more space to work with. type of gun. That's something we need to think about here. Let's pop that up a little. Do we want a revolver? Or do we want a semi-auto like a 1911 or Glock or something? I feel like for this guy, the uh, revolver's the way to go. So let's put this in. Add some lines for our cylinder. If we were doing a uh, comic book or something like that, we might want to uh, not do a, just a straight side angle. That's kind of boring in a way. Um, but for a logo, especially when it might appear small in some instances, it's going to be much easier to recognize it doing it this way. So that's really important and sometimes you gotta make some sacrifices for the design aesthetic.
bit of a beaver tail on the frame there. You know what I really love are the uh, brake top revolvers. So let's do something like that. problem that we have. Using these guides. It's real easy to end up grabbing that little wand or wrap the tab that you use to manipulate the guide when you want to draw. Since we don't have any licensing, we're not trying to mimic any particular revolver here. I took a lot of care to use the guides and draw these lines really straight. And now I'm just freehanding sort of my theory behind that is just to kind of keep everything lined up but still have it look like a drawing because the rest of it is so cartoony 
It would be strange if this part was a very technical drawing. Some marksman sights here. Okay. Then all we need to do hold back, let's get this back to ninety. This at ninety degrees. Okay, that is a massive revolver. I kind of like that. Be too massive. I don't know. It's a major part of the uh, name, brand name, so it's kind of hard to say. Okay, well, we'll think about that for a bit. I'm going to duplicate that layer, turn the bottom off, add a layer. I actually kind of want that right here. Turn the underlying artwork off there. Okay, and then let's uh, let's have one oh, This was my palette. Um, there we
This is not the most ideal brush for this. Keep my pressure up, I think I get kind of consistent color. I'll go back and erase out the parts I don't want. Nah, actually, this is just creating a huge mess. Let's change brushes. Um, man, does this brush work? Oh, no, that's not good. Let's grab our brush library and oh, no, that's not good. What I want is a fairly large area, but I don't want too much blurring around it. I want it kind of sharp. There we go. That's probably what I want. I just need it much larger. Still going to have some cleanup, but much less. And that's one area where Photoshop has some big benefits. Is it's easy to just mask off an area. In case you missed it there, when I was goofing around with the layers, I put the artwork layer, the line art, up above the color layer so that I can just fill in underneath. Without having to worry about it. This is another area where those thick lines, thick outlines actually are really helpful because Gives me a lot more margin for error. Size down a bit. Back in.
go. Now let's grab our oops, not the brush library. Let's grab our color library and a little bit different color here. His ears. So we want to erase out the whites of his eyes. I'm going to go ahead and use that color for his pupils. fingernails would be this color. Oh, oops, I forgot to Let's see which one is it? 17, I think. Have to color in his feet. I hear my dog complaining. He may want to go out. It's been a little while. He hasn't come to get me, which usually he would do. might be trying to convince his older brother to bolster his cause. What you need, Max? Hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I think he's telling me I'm done. I probably should be done anyway. I've been at this for a while. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, I probably should. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, buddy. Now, once you start adding in some colors, I feel like that's where you get some really fun uh, artwork. Now you're really adding depth and shape to it. So. Uh, this wouldn't really be great for a logo necessarily. Uh, it depends on the where the logo is going to be used a little bit, but uh, generally I like to keep things like one color and uh, make it really simple and cheap to print that. But um, although printing shirt printing and and stuff like that's actually come a long way now, and uh, it's not as important as it used to be. So I don't know. We'll probably we'll come in and finish out coloring it uh, later and uh, kind of play around with that a bit um, in another stream, I think, here. But uh, we accomplished the most important part, which was to get all the line work done. I'm pretty happy with the line work as it is. Um, I think that's kind of good to go. So I'm going to call today a success. So thank you for... Uh, hanging out with me here. Um, well, it's almost dinner time for these dogs. That's what he's complaining about. I bet he's hungry. I think also there might be a dog barking outside, which he probably wants to investigate. Um, okay, anyway, uh, let's just plug my stuff and get out of here. So uh, 5012 Design, uh, that's me. You can find me on Facebook, 5012design, uh, or 5012design.com, and on uh, Twitch as Uncle Mike 5012. Hopefully, I will have one of these names as a YouTube channel uh, in the near future. I'm really trying to grow my YouTube channel so that I can get to the point where I get to uh, be blessed with a unique URL that's not some long string of random characters. So, uh, if you're seeing this on YouTube, it really helps me out if you can hit that like button. Uh, if you enjoyed this, and uh, leave me a comment. I'd love to see your comments there, uh, as well as uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, share it around. If you've got anyone who might enjoy um, just some chill time, hanging out, doing some drawing, listening to music, um, send them send them to my channel. Um, also, well, there will be some content there for uh, my friends that are into firearms. We're going to do some range videos and stuff there. Uh, a little bit. Also, just some projects that I want to work on around the house. So, uh, Kydex sheaths for knives, and I'm um, working on restoring an axe right now, which has been kind of fun. That's a little different for me, but I'm really enjoying it. I think I'm going to do some more of that. So, uh, definitely hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you want to hit the little bell icon, that'll let you know as soon as a video goes live. You can go watch it there. Uh, also, uh, definitely head over to Twitch TV, twitch.tv slash Uncle Mike 5012 and give me a follow there. Um, that way you can see these live and there is actually a little chat. Um, I don't have much of an audience yet so uh, we haven't had any real discussions going but uh, it is a place where you can come in and uh, hop on that chat. You can tell me if my volume levels are off or something. Help me get that tuned in. Um, I never really know about that. Uh, as well as uh, ask me questions about what I'm working on and uh, if you have ideas, share those with me, and I'll try and reply to you there. Um, and we can kind of uh, communicate a little bit about what's going on. Um, definitely a good place to answer some of those questions. I'm talking to myself here in my studio, so uh, there's probably a lot of instances where I might start a thought and maybe not finish it or not explain it very well. Uh, if that happens, you know, catch me in the live chat and let me know, ask me, you know, what, where was I going with that? So, um, 
yeah, that's it. So twitch.tv slash Uncle Mike 5012, uh, 5012 there, 5012, or at 5012design.com, 50 spelled out, F I F T Y, number 12, design.com, or on Facebook, also spelled out, 50 and then number 12, design, uh, facebook.com slash 5012design. So that's it. Uh, again, we've been listening to Martin Bennett on uh, Google Play Music here. Um, we looks like we got through all of the Bothy Culture uh, uh, album, and we're just starting the Grit album, which I feel like that's where he really started to take off with that sort of techno Celtic fusion. Um, so maybe we'll come back to that yeah, next next stream. Hopefully, I'll remember here. We'll go, come back, start over on the beginning of Grit, and we can go through some of that as long as uh, his estate or his uh, publisher doesn't get mad at me for uh, listening to the music on the on the cast here. So, um, hopefully, that won't be an issue. And hopefully, that you guys, if you're enjoying the music, will go uh, check out his music on Yahoo Music or uh, Google Play, iTunes, wherever you can find it. Uh, definitely uh, pick it up. You'll enjoy it, I think. Um, I certainly do, and I've been listening to it for a long time. So uh, that's it. Uh, have a great evening, and thanks for hanging out. <laughs>